In this video, we're going to take the concrete wiggle example that we've been working on for the last couple of videos and start abstracting it. This is a first pass over that abstraction, so we don't expect the API we design in this pass to actually be the final one we end up with. We'll probably do several iterations of reorganizing things, moving things around, and renaming things until things click together better. But we need to get the process started somewhere. The main thing we'll be looking at as we do iterations to make it better is do we have to write a lot of extra code, do a lot of extra compute work, is the maintenance difficult, is it confusing how to know when you have access to a certain function or other like symbol like a type, is the visibility rules between different layers confusing, things like that. As we massage it, we're trying to make sure that nothing seems too confusing, nothing seems like a whole lot of extra code versus the example, hopefully the extra code is relatively minor. and hopefully we can see how in the future as other systems come online like other renderers and uh, uh, applications using the graphics hopefully we will be able to see how they're going to start using the pieces we're building so let's get into it before I get into the abstraction there's one quick thing I want to do I am now at a point where I have this example win32 OpenGL program and I have a main program and several others as well. And whenever I go to change code, I might be changing code that affects several things simultaneously, or I might be jumping back and forth between two programs without realizing it. So I want a single place where I can go to just rebuild everything to make sure I've got everything working from time to time. I won't be using this all the time. I will usually just build one thing for speed, but it's useful to have a spot where I'm keeping track of all of my targets so that I can occasionally test that they're all still building. The first thing I'm doing is taking the example and copying out the portion of it that I consider outside of the abstraction. What I mean by that is when I go to make an abstraction, some code is going to live inside of the abstraction being the implementer of the abstraction, and some code is going to live outside of the abstraction and directly call into it being the outside of that abstraction or the user of that abstraction. Since we started with a concrete example, we already have code for both sides. There just is no abstraction boundary. And so what we're kind of doing is taking the code from the example and we're driving a layer right into the middle of it, splitting some of it off into outside code and some of it off into inside code. So what that means is the main function and main loop that I already have in the example have the right shape. I want to preserve that shape, but replace the details. Instead of directly calling into hard paths that do the right things to create an open jail wiggle win32 situation, I want to put in some more abstract things. I'm going to just put in a function call and pretend like that function already exists. So this is the write the usage code first method of designing an API, except I'm applying it not by writing things from scratch, but using an example from a concrete example as the shape I am trying to fill in, and I'm replacing placing concrete details with these write the usage code first instances of API calls. Before I go and do the implementation for these functions, I want to take a note that I've already started seeing some issues that are going to come up. In particular, some of the functions that I have here that I have sketched out won't need any OpenGL details in their backend. They can be implemented just on the Win32 API, so they don't need to assume OpenGL or any other graphics API to work. They just need to assume Win32. And I'm not entirely sure how I want to organize that concept yet. So I'm going to leave notes around in this code for now that says, hey, I'm coupling this in with the OpenGL abstraction layer or the OpenGL implementation layer, but I want to figure out where it actually belongs in a future pass. With that, we're ready to go fill in the implementations for these functions. Luckily, again, I have a concrete example that shows how these things actually work, so I can largely copy paste that in and then massage the details to make it fit into this new structure that I'm placing it in. But I don't have to go and figure out all the concrete details that were already discovered and implemented in the example.
So one detail I am going to have to change here is I want to switch to an opaque handle. Not that I know for sure exactly how I want that opaque handle to work in the end, but I just suspect that that is going to be a better way to structure the API. So I am preemptively switching off of returning the full struct and switching to returning an opaque handle. And that means at the boundary of the API, I have to convert back and forth. Now this won't be too hard. I'm going to just do it as a, a fixed array of 64 slots. I think if one process wants to create more than 64 windows, that that would be very surprising. So I'm perfectly happy to say you get up to 64 slots for windows. Windows. And as you go creating windows, I grab more and more slots off of that array until we're out of them. And if we run out of slots, we'll just fail the create window function. We're not even handling multi window completely correctly yet anyways. So it's also a little bit irrelevant. But then the idea is once I've got one of these slots, I figure out the handle for it as just an index into that array, make it one base instead of zero base so that zero can be a null handle and then return it. And then likewise, when I get past the handle, I just check and see if it's in range and check and see if that slot is a currently valid window. And then I go and use it. These opaque handles are actually raising a pretty difficult problem. And while I'm not solving it in this video, I do think it's a good time to start thinking about the problem. So the issue is basically which layer should be responsible for defining the handle type and what are the implications for each possible decision? One aspect of this that's really confusing is that there are so many different layers. As I pointed out in the first video, we need layers for operating system specific things, layers for graphics API specific things, and layers for the intersection of these things, like the Win32 OpenGL stuff that we're currently dealing with. And so on top of that, when we're creating an abstraction layer, we have to be very clear about what we're abstracting and what we're not. So in, for example, if you look at what I'm doing here, I've kept OpenGL in the API calls. And the reason I've done this this whole time is because in my head, what I'm actually thinking is not that I'm abstracting OpenGL out. I'm making a layer where the OpenGL assumption is preserved, but the operating system assumption is hidden. So I have a Win32 OpenGL concrete layer, and that is implementing an abstract OS OpenGL layer, right? It's still OpenGL assumption, but it's not Win32 assumption. Later on, we will hide the graphics API when we incorporate style into this more, but I'm not so worried about that yet. I'm just trying to make it so that if I were to port to Linux, for example, I could make a Linux OpenGL implementation and plug it into the same API. Now, with that said, if I have an OS agnostic OpenGL layer that abstracts the part of the operating system API connection that needs to happen. I'm also going to have one for other APIs. So say we do Vulkan, we do a Win32 Vulkan and a Linux Vulkan, then do I want to have the OS window handle be tied to OpenGL in the OpenGL layer and tied to Vulkan in the Vulkan layer? That's one option. I could say that each layer that is agnostic to the operating system, but specific to the graphics API, and then abstracts away the intersection of those two things, that could have the OS window handle, and each one would have its own handle system. Or I could say that there's going to be another layer, which is the Win32 layer that doesn't have graphic specific stuff and the Linux layer that doesn't have graphic specific stuff. And there's going to be an abstraction on top of both of those. And that could contain the opaque handle type. So that's one, those are two different options there. Another option is I could have all of the layers have a handle type. So the Windows or the operating system agnostic, API agnostic layer would have a handle type. And then each of the API specific operating system agnostic layers would also have a handle type. And there might be some reason why that is the most ideal way to do it too. So I'm not deciding right now how I'm going to do it. I'm leaving to do's everywhere saying, how are we going to do this? And I will come back to it once I've got more information about how these things want to fit together. 
Now, all that's left to do to get this program working again through this abstraction layer is to fill in a few more messy functions, the ones that didn't quite fit in anywhere yet, but that needed to go somewhere. So I just write in those implementations real quick and we get our graphics window back up and running. That's it for today. See you next time.